So we raced in line with expectations. We uh, announced that we were likely to hike already at our June meeting. Inflation is still high, although coming down. But we are worried about the uh, uh, fairly high uh, inflation in the service sector. And we're also seeing a risk of uh, inflation coming from the fairly weak krona. So that's the risk factors. Uh, and that's the reason why we hiked and also that we announced that we have a let's say, hiking bias, uh, although, although not certain uh, for, for the next half year or so. Would you say that rates are now in restrictive territory? Yeah, I would say so. If you look on, on, on the Swedish economy, you see a fairly uh, uh, restriction in, in the household sector, highly indebted household sector in Sweden. You definitely see a dropping retail sales. Uh, house, house, uh, uh, the housing market is is uh, is not falling any longer, but has been been falling in prices slightly. More importantly, if you look on the house construction, that is is uh, is falling fairly dramatically, and of course they are extremely interest rate sensitive because they they need to have clients borrowing money to buy their their buildings, and that's basically not happening. So for sure. Uh, inflation is restrictive, but it's uneven. Restricted in some sectors, less restrictive in, in, in other sectors. Let's go back to what you were saying about this small hiking bias looking ahead. Your rate path has been revised upwards. You are signaling a peak of 4.1% in the second quarter of 2024. That is up from 4.05% prior to that. Uh, you are keeping the door open to further interest rate hikes. What do you think would get you there? What would you need to see in the data to go for another rate hike? <laughs> No, for sure, the inflation outcomes are important, and we are pointing at the service inflation. And we 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 discussed a lot the kind of the the latest numbers. And if you take the let's say the last three months and you make that down up to a twelve month rate, they are still running slightly uh, below five percent. So we need to see them come down. Uh, and we also, of course, uh, need to evaluate both the value of the krona, if it were to weaken more, that is that is an issue, but also if the feed-through from the, the already low krona will materialize. That that are, are things that we'll look at. But not only the inflation data, it's also, of course, the kind of general perception of the activity in the overall market, where we, uh, overall economy, where we now see uh, indication that it will be uh, weakening uh, in, in the in next uh, half year or so. But of course, that will also be, be uh, things to, to watch uh, carefully. Sir, you mentioned the corona a couple of times here. Uh, I do want to ask you, given where it's sitting and given that uh, versus the euro, the Swedish krona is basically at an all-time low, as long as there is weakness in the currency, is there still going to be pressure on the Riksbank to keep going with the interest rate hikes to help support the currency? So we have a floating exchange rate regime, so we will not uh, can target a certain level on the krona. It is the effect on the krona, from the krona on inflation that is in our focus. Uh, but again, it is a concern because it's been weakening, it's been weakening further, and the impact, as we uh, line, uh, discussed more in, uh, in the report published in June, the risk is that the feed-through might be a little bit higher than we thought. So, so that's our main concern. Uh, but we are not targeting a specific, a specific level uh, as we don't have a fixed exchange rate regime. We have a floating exchange rate regime with, uh, with inflation target. Mm.